Recently, I created a couple of paintings like this for some friends and family, and I had so much fun. It was so easy that I thought I'd walk you through the process. So what I started with is a canvas and a stash of pastel color paints. And I'm just filling my paint tray a little bit up with these paints. These are acrylic paints. And I'm also using a very flat brush and I've got a cup of water on hand. Now my first order of business was to dilute the acrylic paint a little bit. The reason being is because the texture of the canvas is almost like painting on sandpaper. And as you can see, my poor little paintbrush can only get about halfway across the canvas before stopping in its tracks. Adding the water gives the paint a little something called viscosity. It allows the paint to move and flow much more easily across the canvas. I'm trying to create the image of a loose leaf sheet of paper. Now, if you're one of those friends who really gets hung up on straight lines, I'm gonna ask that if you do this, you just let go of that notion. You might've noticed that I didn't draw any lines first. I'm not using a ruler. What I'm doing here is embracing the lumps, the curved lines, all all the kind of funky lines that I might run into because in the end, when you're all finished, nobody's going to notice. And if all the lines are a little bit crooked and wonky, it all looks like it's intentional. So after I was finished painting my horizontal lines for my loose leaf sheet of paper, to let that dry, I decided to work on the edge of the canvas. This canvas is wrapped around the wooden frame and I don't like those bare naked edges hanging out there. So I always, almost always it seems, add these little stripes of color to the edge of my canvas. Again, using that flat brush, it automatically creates the perfect size line for the edge. Once the loose leaf lines were dry, I decided to create a stencil from a file folder of a pencil. If you're curious how I did that, imagine drawing a house so you have a triangular shaped roof and then make the house extra long with the two horizontal lines that go down and then just curve around the bottom. That's how I made my stencil. And I'm using chalk because I can erase chalk from a canvas very easily, especially if it's light in color. So oftentimes I'll practice and sketch things out in chalk. Now, when I was painting the pencil, I will say I did have to add some white paint to the yellow. You'll notice that it was pretty see-through when I was painting and you could see the line of the loose leaf through it. To make it more opaque, I added white paint so that it wasn't so translucent. For the wood of the pencil, I mixed together a little bit of yellow, some orange, and some white. And then I tested it out just to make sure it was going to be a good enough color. Basically, the color I'm going for is the color of my table. And again, using white really helps these acrylic paints. I mean, these acrylic paints aren't like the best thing on the planet. So a lot of times they are kind of uh, diluted in pigment. So if you need to ever bulk up a color because it's kind of see-through, try adding white. It is going to make your color light, but I promise it'll at least make it more opaque. Once the wood of the pencil was done, then I started working on the pink of the eraser and I used some metallic silver paint for the feral part. It does help if you kind of let these colors dry in between. You could set your canvas outside on a hot sunny day and it'll dry pretty quickly. The great thing about acrylic paint is that it does dry fast. Then I got out my chalk again and started blocking in the letters of the name. Again, chalk is great because you can just take a towel and erase it so easily. Now, I enjoy cursive writing, so it comes kind of easily for me. So I'm making this look really simple. Um, if you struggle with your handwriting a little bit or you're not really confident in it, then use a kind of handwriting that you are confident with. If you don't feel confident with like cursive writing or swirly writing, then don't do it. Do what's going to be fun and enjoyable for you to paint. So practice on a scrap piece of paper. Use that flat brush because especially if you're going to do a cursive kind of font, it really makes for beautiful lines. Or you could simply use block or bubble letters like this. So I was kind of going for like a bubble letter look. In order to be a true bubble letter, it would probably have to be a lot thicker. And I'm just kind of blocking those letters in before I let it dry. 
And I decided to use all of the pastel colors I could get my kitten mittens on because I really thought that they looked beautiful with the colors of this canvas. Now, while those letters below are drying, my favorite thing to do, and this isn't necessary, but it's just one more layer of cuteness, says me, is to make all of my letters have these little highlights. So I've switched from my flat brush to a really pointed brush, and I'm just dipping it in my white paint, applying the paint pretty thickly, and just dotting and dragging my brush. And I'm only doing that on one side to kind of give the appearance that there's a highlight. If you do it on both sides, then you kind of lose that aspect. So pick a side and only put your polka dots of white on one side. Next up, the pencil was dry, so I got out my pointed brush again and I started outlining my pencil. It really does make it pop and it also goes along with that cartoon look that I'm definitely going for. When I'm done outlining the parts of the pencil, I like to use a dotted or a skipping line, just like I did with those letters, just cause. I mean, when you're painting, you're going to notice that you enjoy certain things. You enjoy the way they look. You enjoy it as you paint it. That's your style. So don't shy away from that. Don't think, oh, I probably shouldn't do it that way. No, if you like the way it looks and you enjoy painting that way, embrace it. Push it a little bit further because that's your style. And now that my letters were finished, or actually I'm letting them dry still, I decided to paint that pink vertical line that's on the loose leaf as well as a little circle. And then to just continue, because honestly, I can't stop painting. Once I start, I have a hard time stopping. I have to like physically walk away. I decided to add a little line around the whole picture just to kind of bring it all together. Next up, I am only doing a shadow on the left-hand side. It's kind of like when you do the highlights. You pick one side and then on the opposite of that side, that's where your shadow will go. Now I am using a brush that has, again, a really nice point so I can create these lines, but don't get hung up on making your lines perfect or perfectly straight because honestly, it will drive you bananas and you just can't do it. So embrace the wiggly lines. And then if you see you keep having them, then embrace that as your style and then just add more to make it look intentional. Now that that's finished, I went back and added all of the highlights. I'm adding those highlights highlights because I wanted the letters to look like balloons, like shiny balloons. Like I said, to really accomplish that, I maybe should have made them a little bit bigger. I just didn't have the space and I was pretty happy with the way it looks. Once all of my letters were finished, I decided to add a little pop of the highlight to the pencil before calling this complete. This was a super fun project. I've done three of these now and I've enjoyed each and every one. I can do this in an afternoon and if it's something you wanna make for a teacher in your life or for your own classroom, I really recommend it. And of course, you could do something different than a pencil, maybe a palette, maybe a paintbrush, whatever your cute little heart desires. But most of all, embrace all the funky lumpiness as in all things in life and just have fun. If you are going to gift it to somebody, you could always personalize it on the back by signing the canvas, sending along a little note. Anyway, I hope you guys had fun joining me on my little painting adventure. And you can find out more on my blog. Toodles.